As a wildlife photographer, I use trail cameras quite a lot. This is the new range from Wild Game Innovations and over the next few weeks I'm going to be testing some of these for Scott Country. So if you have a look on their website at www.scottcountry.co.uk These are really handy pieces of kit. If you're working on animals such as badger, fox, pine marten, anything that's a wee bit elusive, these record the date and the time which will prove very useful to you so that you know when you need to be there to photograph such an animal. This one is called the Cloak 10 Pro Lights Out. Just to run through the camera itself, up at the top here you've got the invisible LEDs are behind here so it's completely covert when it's in operation. Next to you've got the camera lens which is a fixed lens, then you have the sensor. This sends out the in invisible detection zone. If you imagine it's like a, a torch beam shining out so it fans out in a cone shape. So that picks up heat and movement, so it needs to be outside, there's no need putting it behind a window and expecting something to trip it, it won't. It needs to be outside to pick up the heat and movement. Underneath here you've got a very small LCD screen. This particular model does not have a playback screen. So once it's been triggered, it will tell you that on the screen how many times it's been triggered. You need to take it back to a device, whether it's a laptop, uh, an iPad, something that's capable of reading a an SD card and you will be able to play that footage back. This one operates from AA batteries which are up in underneath here. In this case I am using uh, just ordinary rechargeable AA batteries. Using rechargeables like that you will notice that the battery indicator never ever goes to full. That's because Rechargeables are basically 1.5 volts, where if you use something like a Energizer Lithium, they are the full 1.5, but they're not rechargeable, uh, and you'll probably get a wee bit longer power with them. People often ask, how long do the batteries last? There is no given answer for that. It depends on the time of the year, and again, the type of batteries, and also how often the camera is being triggered. Obviously, in colder weather, it'll use more power. If it's been set out for weeks and end and it's not been triggered, it won't use the same power as if it had been triggered every two minutes or so. This one is a, a fairly easy menu to set up. There's not a lot in it. Uh, when you switch it on, this lights up blue. You'll get the option to set the date and time, something that, as I say, that I recommend you do. It's very important to have that information. Underneath that, it tells you, do you want to take stills or video? Personally, I tend to shoot video. It's easier to take a still from a video, unless I've got it out during the day. A colour still is quite good, but if you take one at night, it's at quite a slow shutter speed, so if the animal has been moving at any speed, it won't be as sharp. You'll easier take one from the video. Plus, a still is just that fraction in time, whereas a video, if you've got a video running for 15, 20 seconds, uh, you have a better chance of picking up what else is moving in that area. Then underneath that, you've got the delay. That is this time in between each time the camera has been triggered before it will re-trigger again. So if a badger comes along, trips the camera, it will film, film for 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever it is, and then what will happen after that, it will stop, and because I've told it to wait 15 seconds, if the badger is still there, it won't trigger again until another 15 seconds. This model, um, it was 15 seconds, 30 seconds in a minute, I think is what it is inside. You just power it up from the power button there, you will see the red light came on quickly there to tell me it's on. Basically just go through the menu, setting it up whatever you like. Just remember if you've been had it set up for say stills and you decide you want to put it onto video, when you move it across onto the video to flash, always confirm it with the enter button. If you just move it over and leave it and shut it back up, it will revert back to where you had it. You must confirm it with that. It's the same with any movement that you change confirm it with enter. Then all you do is um, put the power on, you will get a, a red light flash in there to tell me that it's about to arm itself and I've got between 30 seconds and a minute to get out of the way. You'll see it'll start to flash quite rapidly just before it completely arms itself and then when it's fully armed there is no light come from it until it is completely covert. It just shuts up and I click like that. This is a waterproof camera. 
it blends in quite well and it's surprising just how invisible the cameras themselves can actually be. I'm going to set one up over here on a tree and I'll just show you how I do that. This particular model does not come with the tripod mount on the bottom that some of them do. Some of them have a tripod mount there. Uh, this one comes with two bungee cords, so you have to be a, a wee bit more thoughtful as to how you're going to put this up. They're not that particularly long, so you're not going to put it around a massive tree. That said, there are plenty of spaces here you could actually tie it up with another strap, an old belt, string for a want of a better thing if you've nothing else to, that would do, or join a couple of these cords together. But it's fairly simple to do, and just with a wee bit of thought as to where you position it on the tree, you should get some good footage. I've had a quick look around this area and there seems to be quite a bit of badger activity here. I'm not actually at the set. There's a nice badger run comes up past me here, up round behind the tree and up. So I'm going to set the camera up on here uh, to see if I can get the badger as it comes up this track. Now this particular camera has a fairly quick response time. Uh, it's, under, it's under half a second I think it is, this trigger time, so when the camera detects something, some of the older ones used to take a wee bit before they would sort of get the engine going and start up. This one is very, very quick, so hopefully it'll get that. But just to be on the safe side, what I'm going to do is put a handful of peanuts here as well. The other thing I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and target two species here. I'm going to see if I can get mice at the same time. Mice often come out for the peanuts, so Many people will say that these won't trigger for small animals. Well, I've got this, when I, well, when I set it up on the tree here, it's about four to five meters away from where the food will be. So I'm going to see if I can get both badger and mice. So we'll wait and see. Now, for setting it up, as I say, we've got these bungee cords, so I've had to be a bit careful and I've picked a decent sized tree that the bungee cord will go round. So all I do is just put the bungee there, pull it round, and hook it on. I could actually leave that probably on with one, but just to be on the safe side, uh, I'm going to put the second one on. Had it been a bit bigger tree, I could probably join the two of them together. But anyway, we'll just hook that round there for security. Just watch if you put them up in an area where there's livestock. Livestock will smell your hands off them, and if it's at a height where a cow can get to, a cow will certainly knock this off of here, or it'll have a damn good try. Uh, as I say, we've got the, the sensors up here, which are going to fire out the light down through there, and the detection zone in here. So what you've got to remember is, this is sending out a beam, a cone-shaped beam, to light up an area down in here. Some people might have thought, well, if he's putting it out for badgers, badgers are quite low to the ground, so why have you not put the camera low to the ground? Well, as I say, this detection zone that it puts out, and the IRs that it puts out, if you put that too low to the ground, it will cut off before it reaches the area that you're trying to illuminate. So if, if you can imagine, just take a torch and shine it from a height down at 30, 45 degree angle, you'll see the torch beam lit up. Put the torch down to the ground and shine, you'll see it'll catch the grass in the foreground. And that's just the same as what these cameras will do. So you don't want that, so put it up. I certainly normally put them at head height. If you're in a location where you think the public may interfere with, put it higher up the tree, pointing down like that. The public seldom look up, so you have a better chance. But as I say, they blend in quite well anyway. I'm fortunate here that this tree is lying at quite an angle, so I'm not going to have to tilt the camera too much. If that had been on a standard tree or a pole or a fence post that's straight up and down, buy yourself a rubber wedge or cut yourself a piece of wood and just drop it down the back like that, just enough so that you can tilt the camera forward so that it's projecting down to the area that you're wanting to target for your species like that. But this one's okay, I think, but looking there and just looking down through, the beam's going to down through there, that's my detection zone, so I'm going to put my peanuts down there. The last thing to do is of course remember to arm the camera, so all I do is take that off Press the power button on, I'm getting the red flashing light, close it up, but as I say at the moment this has got a blue light on and the red light flashing. Don't worry, these will go out once you're clear of the area. Even when it's detects something in front of the camera, starts recording, there is nothing lights up on the camera, so it's completely covert. So they're ideal for security as well. So we're going to leave this here for a couple of days, then hopefully I'll get my target species and I'll be able to show you the footage from this camera. As I say, this is the Cloak 10 Pro Lights Out. Uh, I think it's one of the, the lower specified in the range. 
but don't let that put you off because these cameras have very, very sophisticated technology in them. Sometimes the more simpler the better. This range goes right up to a 360 degree camera, which uh, you have to be a bit more thoughtful of because it's very, it's very difficult to test if you stay in the area because it picks up the detection all round and will turn and film where you are. But more about that in, in, a, in a later video. You can see just how quick the camera response time was there with that badger running through the shot. Now the badger has returned and you can see the camera is looking slightly down at an angle. The eyes are reflecting there in the IRs but you get a clear view of the badger itself. And yes we did get mice. If you have a look there you'll see two moving about. Their eyes are glowing there with the IRs hitting them and that was at a distance of about four to five meters away.